I procrastinated like crazy doing this show. This is the worst! <laughs> See, welcome into the worst fantasy show. I am your host with the least, Jack Lucine. Y'all know the drill by now. This is a organic grassroots product. We don't do sponsors and ads. If you guys could super kick that subscribe button, uh, maybe drop some comments. It really helps the show. Uh, we are going to be shooting up to three episodes a week coming out of Labor Day weekend. I'm going to be on vacation this weekend, uh, going to see some friends in West Sega Beach. Uh, but then after that, uh, starting, I'm going to basically probably drop an episode on Thursday before kickoff. I might do early in the morning or something like that. Uh, maybe we'll do Wednesday. Maybe that's, we'll figure it out. But we'll have two next week, and then from then on until, uh, you know, the end of the fantasy regular season, which for me, I'm sorry for you week 18ers out there. I'm not I'm not doing it. I'll be here till 17. And then we will be uh, back to once a week, but until then we're going to be three a week, including a couple lives. So keep your eyes and ears peeled uh, for today's episode. I thought uh, it would be fun to do a little show uh, about the post draft. Like, you know, once you, I think everyone's kind of getting their last drafts in uh, this time of year, but once that draft has happened, what now? Uh, so I, I thought I would put a post on Twitter. I got some great advice from some people on the Twitterverse. Uh, I also threw in a couple of my own tips and tricks. Uh, but I think obviously the first thing you need to do is keep an eye on waivers. <laughs> Thanks, Jamal. None this guy. None this guy. None this guy. None this So last year for me, uh, Puka Nakua and Devon Ashane were especially uh, late waiver ads in some of my shallower leagues, as was Trey McBride. Uh, those were a couple of guys I was really into that I was adding. Again, when you're talking about like your 10 and 12 man leagues uh, with only five bench spots. Uh, some of those rosters may not be as deep. So you got to really keep an eye out, especially if you drafted anyone that's on PUP or IR. Like, example, Jonathan Brooks immediately should be stashed in your IR spot, assuming your league has one, so that you can go pick up another player. Um, some guys I like, uh, you know, we'll talk about uh, some more, but like Malik Washington is one that I've really been trying to make sure that I have in all my leagues. Um, and now we're seeing some cuts and some, even some guys land on other teams, you know, like Samaj P. Ryan with the Chiefs. I'm not as into that one, but I could understand why people are adding him as a handcuff to Pacheco or a guy who could have a standalone receiving role in that offense. Uh, so again, just making sure that you're keeping up with the news and that um, not just that you're adding guys, but that you're keeping an eye on. The, the people that are getting dropped. So a perfect example here uh, would be like Justin Fields. I feel like Justin Fields is a lottery ticket. Now I can understand there's not every single roster is going to be able to hold him. Uh, and especially you're going to see this in, I think, your single quarterback leagues where uh, the fatigue of holding Justin Fields will wear thin for some managers, and he will find his way to waivers. Uh, after Russell Wilson was declared the starter, which I always assumed would happen. Now, I've always drafted Fields in the idea that he would play possibly eight to ten games in the second half of the season, and that when he is on the field, he is an absolute game breaker for fantasy football because of how much he runs the ball. He is a locked in uh, top 10 fantasy quarterback, no matter how bad he is with the ball in his hands throwing, he runs the ball like crazy. So he's a guy that I would be keeping an eye on to see if he's dropped. Uh, there's, you know, you might see in short shallower leagues again, handcuff running backs or third quarterbacks in Superflex uh, people are dropping. 
So if that happens, just again, make sure that you are keeping an eye on the waivers for drops. Now we are talking about shallow release because it is redraft season. And in that vein, you may not be able to add every single person that you want to add. But you can, there's a lot of, uh, most apps I would say have the feature called watch list where you can put players in that list that you just want to keep a closer eye on. I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watch. So make sure that you set your watch list. Uh, you know, just again, deep sleepers for 10 to 12 man leagues. I'm just going to rattle some names off quick fire here. This is your sleeper section. Are you ready, guys? Sleepers, 10 to 12 man league, quarterback. Uh, I like Sam Howell. I think he does eventually get the job over Geno Smith. I like Jameis Winston. He could potentially start if uh, Deshaun Watson has more troubles with either injuries or bad play. Nick Mullins, I think, will definitely start some games for the Vikings. I do not believe in Sam Darnold. Those are uh, deeper super flex ads. For running back, Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson, I definitely think should be added. I am not a believer in DeAndre Swift. He was actually pretty bad. Uh, the Eagles' offensive line covered up a lot of his mistakes last year, so I would have both of those guys as potential sleepers. Dylan Laube, a running back for uh, rookie running back for the Las Vegas Raiders, presents really as the only true receiving option out of that backfield. Kind of reminds me of Danny Woodhead. Uh, I like Will Shipley is just kind of a deep, deep lottery stash in case anything should happen to Saquon Barkley. He's looked good in the preseason. Braylon Allen, same thing for the Jets in regards to Brees Hall. I like Tyrone Tracy. I have since the early, um, you know, early preseason, even uh, a little bit before the draft. I thought he was a great receiving option out of the backfield. He landed with the Giants and has a clear opportunity as the running back two behind Devin Singletary. Deuce Vaughn, I think, is getting overlooked as kind of a Darren Sproles-esque figure in that Dallas Cowboys backfield. He could maybe have standalone value as a Tony Pollard figure behind the grinders. Isaac Garendo um, popped up with a groin, but I was adding him everywhere I could in light of the Elijah Mitchell injury news. Samaje P. Ryan, we already talked about a little bit, deep Kansas City stash. Uh, now that he's landed with the Chiefs. K.J. Osborne getting into the wide receivers now for the New England Patriots. Seems to be running with the starters and is worth stashing in deep, deep leagues. Uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals, I like Jermaine Burton and Andre Yosevash. For my Pittsburgh Steelers, I am still holding on to Roman Wilson. He will definitely emerge sooner probably rather than later. But at some point this season, you will hear the name Roman Wilson. He is better than Calvin Austin and Van Jefferson. Those are the only names ahead of him on the depth chart. Trey Tucker uh, is a, a popular sleeper for the Las Vegas Raiders. I don't believe in it as much, but I put him on the list. Tyler Boyd. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins already dealing with injuries. Calvin Ridley susceptible as well. So I do like Tyler Boyd as the uh, consistent slop, slot option for Will Levis. Uh, Josh Reynolds should see some starter playing time for the Denver Broncos. And getting into some tight ends, uh, Tucker Craft, the second of the Green Bay Packers tight ends. He profiled closer to Mark Andrews. Whereas uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Luke Musgrave profile closer to Hayden Hurst. Colby Parkinson, probably my favorite tight end sleeper. I have him everywhere this year. He has uh, solidified the tight end one job for the Los Angeles Rams and Matt Stafford. Absolutely loves his tight ends. And Michael Gasicki. I think Mike Gasicki, uh, you know, very much maybe not the best blocking tight end in spite of his size, but he is a good receiving option. I kind of like him as a sneaky option for the Bengals. Um, but yeah, those are some of my deeper sleepers. Those are guys that should be on your watch list in a 10 man league, maybe added in 14 to 16 men, especially if they're floating out there on waivers. But next up, uh, we're going to want to make sure that we are familiarizing ourselves familiarize, get to know your app and your roster and your scoring and your league mates and your league in general. Go fuck yourself. 
So the reason that I'm saying this is because, yes, you may have looked at it pre-draft and really studied the scoring and roster construct and everything. You think you've drafted the perfect team, but, hey, we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all overlook things. Always go back and double check and see if there isn't something that like, oh, maybe you overlooked and it just, and you know, especially if you, or if you were that person that you didn't, uh, you maybe overlooked something in the scoring settings and didn't notice till halfway through the draft when you saw the draft board looked wonky. Um, again, just making sure that you are constantly looking for ways to adjust and improve your team. So again, um, looking for those late lottery tickets like a Trey Tucker or a Malik Washington who we talked about earlier. Uh, if you did something silly, for example, like drafting two kickers and two defenses, definitely going to want to hold one kicker and one defense. In fact, there's a lot of people out there that subscribe to the idea of, especially in a 10-man league, and I get this, don't hold any kicker or any defense. Just hold two extra players as kind of lottery tickets until the regular season. And at the very last minute, you drop a couple guys to get your kicker defense. Uh, I I tend not to do that. Again, those guys I tend just to put into my watch list. Um, maybe you end up kind of losing that, that waiver, uh, that run to the waivers. But for the most part, I, I find that you know, your Devon Asians, your Pukunuku is those guys get snapped up early, like even before the the actual regular season. And then there's a big rush week one for waivers. And then it kind of mitigates for the next, like, I feel like slowly peters out for the next like five weeks until about like week 10 to 12. And then waivers get hot and heavy again. Um, So, you know, I think trades is something that everybody loves in drafts uh, and it can be really hard in a redraft but there are definitely windows of opportunity I think right after the draft and before the regular season when everyone is kind of antsy and waiting for that season to start definitely definitely want to attack some trade targets AIDA attention interest decision action attention do I have your attention? Interest. Are you interested? I know you are, because it's fuck or walk. You close or you hit the bricks. Decision. Have you made your decision for Christ? An action. So when it comes to trades, what I would normally do in this situation is attempt to trade up early, especially, um, I think, you know, uh, just a perfect and clear example, when the news dropped from Sean McVay that Kyron Williams may be returning punts, immediately go and make some uh, trade offers for Kyron Williams. See if you can't package a couple middle-tier options. Uh, just as like a perfect example, if you could trade like a David Montgomery uh, or a DeAndre Swift type of running back, like one of those like middle-tier running backs, um, and you kind of put them with like a like a um, a wide a wide receiver borderline two three. Um, who's a good like a Jacoby Myers maybe? Kind of go for like a two for one. See it and just throw it at the Kyron manager and see what they say. Um, maybe they counter. You know, maybe they're like, oh, I I want a better one of your running backs, but it's still like your RB two and. You know, you work out where it's like you get a wide receiver out of it. I don't know, but every league is different. I'm just saying when things happen like that, you know, Jamar Chase hasn't signed the contract yet, and it's getting kind of close to the beginning of the regular season. Now might be the time to start throwing a, out a couple low ball offers. And, again, just seeing if the the Jamar Chase, Kyron Williams, managers of the world's blink. Uh, so if – if you're doing trades, that's really the type of thing that I would be trying to do right now is consolidate assets, especially in a shallower league. Uh, in Tamman leagues, immediately start trying to attack those two for one, three for one trades because there's definitely assets available on your waiver wire to replace some of these kind of lower end options. So guys that you drafted anywhere from like rounds eight and beyond, I feel like are not wholly replaceable but they are 
much more replaceable, you know, to your team than a Jamar Chase when he hits is to the team that you're trading for. So that's kind of the way that I would be attacking trades at this time. Uh, you know, for the most part, I think um, people, though, are generally set after the draft. Everybody feels really good, especially in a 10-man league. Don't be the guy that goes into the chat and is like, oh, I'm, I crushed that draft. I'm, I'm definitely winning this league. It's like literally every all nine other people that drafted in a 10-man league definitely also feel that way, and they all think they're winning the championship too. So you are not special. Um, that's one thing. And then kind of this, like the last thing I'll say here is like this kind of bullshit of like getting cheeky of like, I'm going to pull all my players out of my lineup, uh, so that they can't see the projection. Um, you know, this kind of like, uh, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to stack up on defense, like all the best streaming defenses for week one. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to draft multiple quarterbacks to force people to trade with me. That kind of stupid bullshit, honestly, most of the time never works. Just play to your best, draft to your best, because that's what we're looking for out here is the best. Set your best lineup so that you can really impose on other people and be like, no, that I am the number one in this league. Second Lieutenant Jake Jensen, West Point, graduate with honors. We're here because you're looking for the best of the best of the best, sir. So, I mean, like I said, it really all comes down to luck. Like, you know, you set your best lineup, you you maximize trades, you attack waivers, you do all the things right. Uh, you set your alarms on waiver days for 3 a.m. And at the end of the day, or at the end of the year, I should say, your team could still end up looking like this. So, you know, I don't know, maybe do some prayer circles, gather your family, send prayers to whatever God you may believe in. Uh, maybe do some voodoo magic, make some voodoo dolls with players on opposing fancy teams or like of opposing fancy managers, because at least then you would like have access to like their hair and shit. Uh, when all else fails, you could resort to actual murder. Uh, but I mean, otherwise, I think you're just you get set, you have fun, you enjoy fantasy football for what it is. Uh, I think, you know, people get a little bit overstressed sometimes. It is just a game, folks. You know, a lot of luck does go into it. So just, you know, enjoy your team. Oh, roster bait. Make sure you roster bait. I got that one a bunch of times. People are like, make sure you roster bait. Yeah, you got to masturbate in front of your roster. If you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, you're like, it's because you haven't seen the show The League. Uh, which means you are not a true degenerate yet of the fantasy football, but that's okay. I will give you the homework. I bequeath unto you. Go watch all six or seven seasons of the league. I think I tapped out honestly at like four or five. So at least the first four seasons, go watch the first four seasons of the league. It's a fucking slam dunk show. Just like if you watch this show, now you are a slam dunk to win your fantasy football championships. Do you want to see me dunk? Sure. Yeah? Okay. Are you guys ready? I'm okay. No, don't worry. Does that always happen? Still my favorite drop of all time. We're going to keep it short and sweet today. We're going to wrap it up right here. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, this is going to drop after uh, my home league draft for the Worldwide Fantasy Federation League. Uh, so I'm really excited about that draft. That is tonight. I'm recording this on Thursday. That is tonight. Um, so if you did not catch the actual live show, go back and watch. Uh, it'll be on my channel. Uh, if you only do audio, we do have Worst Fantasy Show and Worst Interviews up on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. Uh, we also do have a wrestling podcast on the YouTube channel and on Spotify if you want to check that out. 
Uh, like I said, we'll be moving back to the three uh, weekly shows coming out of Labor Day. We're going to do two, and then we will go back to three a week. Uh, so please, guys, if you want a super sick, Jesus Christ, super sick, super kick. If you want to smash an elbow, fucking punch it in the face. Fuck up that algorithm, that son of a bitch keeping me down. Hit him up. And until the next time, I'll catch all of you guys on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare-chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare-chested. Somebody stop Look that out, man. Here comes